ancient mural painting in the Nubian pyramids depicting a giant carrying two elephants. You can imagine how huge he was. This is in the land of Kush. If you drive north from Khartoum along a narrow desert road towards the ancient city of Meroe, a breathtaking view emerges from beyond the mirage, dozens of steep pyramids piercing the horizon. No matter how many times you may visit, there is an odd sense of discovery. In Meroe itself, once the capital of the Kingdom of Kush, the road divides the city. To the east is the royal cemetery, packed with close to 50 sandstone and red brick pyramids of varying heights. Many have broken tops, the legacy of 19th century European looters. To the west is the royal city, which includes the ruins of a palace, a temple, and a royal bath. Each structure has a distinctive architecture that draws on local, Egyptian, and Greco-Roman decorative tastes, evidence of Meroe's global connections. A brief history of the land of Kush. The first settlers in northern Sudan date back 300,000 years. It's home to the oldest sub-Saharan African kingdom, the Kingdom of Kush, about 2,500 to 1,500 BC. This culture produced some of the most beautiful pottery in the Nile Valley, including Kerma beakers. Sudan was coveted for its rich natural resources, particularly gold, ebony, and ivory. Several objects in the British Museum collection are made of these materials. Ancient Egyptians were attracted southward seeking these resources during the Old Kingdom. That's about 2,686-2,181 BC, which often led to conflict as Egyptian and Sudanese rulers sought to control the trade there. Kush was the most powerful state in the Nile Valley around 1700 BC. The conflict between Egypt and Kush followed, culminating in the conquest of Kush by Tutmosis I. This is in uh, 1504 to 1492 BC. In the west and south, Neolithic cultures remained as both areas were beyond the reach of the Egyptian rulers. The city of Meroe and the strange mural painting of the giant carrying the elephants. This is the image on the left, as you can see. This huge giant is carrying two elephants as if they're little puppies. So you can imagine how huge this giant must have been. Now, the city of Meroe is marked by more than 200 pyramids, of which many are in ruins. They have the distinctive size and proportions of Nubian pyramids. The Sudan Meroitic depiction of the Nubian carrying the two elephants. The site of Meroe was brought to the knowledge of Europeans in 1821 by the French mineralogist Frédéric Silot, 1787 to 1869. The most interesting objects found were the reliefs and paintings on the walls of the sepulchral chambers. One of the paintings depicts a giant of enormous proportions carrying two elephants. His features are not Nubian, but Caucasian, and his hair is light in color. The, will this mural painting be proof of the existence of a race of red-haired giants with six fingers in antiquity? In the distant past, did giants really roam around the Nile Valley? In 79 AD, the Roman historian Josephus Flavius wrote that the last of the race of Egyptian giants did live in the 13th century BC during the reign of King Joshua. He further wrote that they had huge bodies and their faces were so unlike ordinary humans that it was amazing to look at them and it was scary to listen to their loud voice which was like a lion roar. Now let's remember this is about the time of uh, the tribes of Israel from the Exodus getting in, uh, entering the promised land of Canaan. And uh, that is where the giants were, obviously. Now, moreover, many of the wall paintings of ancient Egypt depict the builders of pyramids as giant people by the size of five to six meters tall. That's about 20 feet tall. According to experts, these giants 
the people were able to lift four to five tons of blocks individually. Some of those ancient mural paintings showed giant kings ruling ancient Egypt, while some depicted comparably little-sized servants under the giant people. In 1988, Gregor Spoeri, a Swiss entrepreneur and a passionate admirer of the history of ancient Egypt, met with a gang of robbers of ancient burials through one of the private suppliers in Egypt. The meeting took place in a small house in Bir Hooker, 100 kilometers northeast of Cairo, where Spoeri witnessed a giant mummified finger wrapped in rags. The finger was very dry and light, and according to Spoeri, the incredible creature to which it belonged should have been at least 16 and a half feet in height, that's five meters. To prove the authenticity, one Tomb Raider showed a photo of an x-ray of the mummified finger taken in the 1960s. And this is on Collective Spark by Ancient History Guest Post. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.